Good morning, Metal Edge Internet. Welcome to a new episode of the Metal Meltdown. And today, we're looking at the latest album from He Is Legend, entitled White Bat. So I was hoping to do my albums I missed video for June and then move on to looking at the first couple albums from the first week of June. But here's the thing, I haven't received any promo copies for any of those records. And it's a little hard to do a little research, it's a little hard to start getting the bones of a, re of a review together if you don't have the thing that you're supposed to review. But that's okay, I'm a flexible dude, it just so happens that I was listening to this record and it just so happens that I have a lot of thoughts and ideas about this record and it just so happens that I would like to express them with you. I know that I've heard He Is Legend before somewhere. But I can't remember which album, I can't remember which song, I don't even really remember how long ago this was. It's it's really more of a gut feeling than anything else. And based on that gut feeling, which again, realistically isn't a whole lot, I remember the band being a lot moodier, being a lot more uh, melodic and somber. Which isn't to say that those elements are not represented on White Bat. Quite the opposite, all of those things are there. But what I didn't really realize, or perhaps what I didn't notice, again, from my gut feeling, um, is that He Is Legend is a lot more versatile and multifaceted than that. There's a really cool, interesting mix of styles and ideas here. You have the muscular heft and southern attitude of a band like Pantera, mixed with the melodic metalcore meets mainstream heavy metal approach of Avenged Sevenfold. Mixed with real, genuine, hard rock swagger on par with the likes of Monster Truck and Glorious Sons. Those aforementioned somber and melodic ideas remaining as well, giving everything a really crisp, soulful touch. And a very interesting lyrical concept inspired by lots of different dark, tragic incidences and lots of different dark, tragic places. To quote directly from this press release, Inspired by Michelle McNamara's true crime classic, I'll Be Gone in the Dark, Shula Kroom wandered around the shadiest and most shadowy corners of the City of Angels, getting into a menacing mindset for the concept he visited the grave of Walt Disney, canvassed mausoleums, and went to the Museum of Death. This is all really fascinating and exciting to me. I mean, the basic blueprint is kind of familiar. It even reminds me of uh, the bare bones formula that we saw in the most recent Bokasa record, but he as legend takes everything to the next extreme level. It's not just punk influences, it's metalcore and melodic hardcore and post-hardcore. It's not just stoner rock, it's southern sludge and, and stadium rock infused with stoner riffs and weird dreary somber melodies. In fact, it works so well that it makes me wonder if I was perhaps a bit too generous towards that Bokasa record. Let's go ahead and retroactively bump that score down to maybe a 3 out of 5. Opening number and title track, White Bat, perfectly puts on display everything I am talking about. It is raucous, it's dark, it's dreary, it's in your face. This super grimy, melodic, hardcore infused with this really soulful, bluesy kind of hard rock, heavy metal energy. All culminating in a vicious breakdown where Kroom channels his inner punk rock hooligan and with the utmost confidence declares, They call me White Bat. I kinda like that. And the way he even projects himself through, I kind of like that. You immediately picture him standing on top of a bar, swinging a bottle of whiskey, shoving the microphone down his fucking face. This track also takes probably the most inspiration from the aforementioned All Be Gone in the Dark, going as far as to literally adapt uh, passages from the book into the lyrics of this song. Particularly in this moment, you'll be silent forever, always clutching your heart. You'll be silent forever, I'll be gone, gone in the dark. You'll be silent forever, I'll be gone, gone in the dark. Words first spoken by the murderer in that track, making this all the more spooky without detracting from the catchy, engaging energy. And that sly, almost bloodthirsty kind of punk rock spirit transitions quite nicely into the next track, Burn All Your Rock Records, which is also one of my favorite tracks on the record. The opening verse has all the oomph and confidence of a really great monster track stadium rock song, accented by a delicious fucking guitar riff that escalates in and out of the forefront of the sound, transitioning into some really great, fun, melodic hardcore jams. 
And while the rest of the record is typically dealing with darker themes and ideas, here he is legend lyrically is probably having the most fun on the entire record, basically spiting out anyone over the age of 40 that would dare complain about music being too loud or music was better back in my day. With lyrics such as, he's a tiny little hateful scum, and he hates to hear the music loud. So he took the broom beside his bed, and he banged it on the roof to shout, What's that racket? Keep it down. Which of course, in He Is Legend's mind, culminates in the ultimate street warrior rock and roll party. Continuing, the kids are having none of that. The freaks took to the streets. Everybody's singing and dancing, and banging your heads. Did you hear what he said? He's trying to burn all the rock records. Closing track Boogie Woman is another favorite for me, as the band fully embraces American groove metal and infuses it with their hard rock spirit and swagger. There are serious ongoing waves of sharp, chunky riffs in this thing, and I love it. And there are a couple tracks sandwiched in between all of this that are really progressive and showcase a lot of interesting ideas within a pretty short amount of time. Take, for instance, Taking Shelter, which at first kind of sounds like it's going for this classic blues rock kind of drawl with classic southern vibes before escalating into this sludgy melodic banger that honestly kind of would fit on one of the early mastodon records or a track like resistor resist her which plays on a lot of different sonic contrast to create really powerful moments and it makes all the hooks all the more cathartic and impressive there are some moments where i think the aforementioned avenge sevenfold influence takes over a little bit. There were a couple moments where I kind of had to ask myself, are we sure this isn't M Shadows doing a guest spot or something? It only pops up a couple times, but it is something I noticed nonetheless, and it did take me out of the moment while listening to this record. And then there's just the simple fact that some songs really just don't hit as hard as others. They don't break the flow. They don't detract from the experience at all. But you know, when you come out of something as, as big as Burn All Your Rock Records, for me, When the Woods Were Young just didn't quite hit those same notes, or at least it didn't hit them quite as well. Nonetheless, I have thoroughly enjoyed this record. I love all the exciting musical directions. I love the dark tones and atmospheres and lyrics. The band plays everything with such confidence and precision, too. Kroom's vocals in particular are really great. He has this beautiful, soulful, raspy touch that he adds to every song, and even the most aggressive and, and righteous hooks feel more honest and down to earth because of it. I'd give this thing a four to five. I think it's a great record. I'd be willing to go higher if it expanded on this concept, maybe just a wee bit more. I think there's more of a grander story that could be told with this, as well as touching up on the things that I also just mentioned. But again, all things considered, if you're looking for a super fun, super creative, super unique, modern heavy metal record, you really can't go wrong with this. I don't know enough about He Is Legend to comment if this is something that fans would like, but that being said, I can't really think of anything on here that would make even the most casual heavy metal listener particularly upset, so I don't see why you wouldn't enjoy it. I don't know, unless you're one of those guys who's like, he mentioned Avenged Sevenfold in his review, therefore this is poser garbage. But as I've learned in the past, there's no satisfying people like you anyway, so fuck it. Four to five, a record so great that I actually had to bump the score for Bokasa. Definitely check this fucking thing out if you haven't already. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown immediately. And you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.